Okay, so we're going to do the actual uh, calibration now for reference level here in the home theater. Uh, the reason I'm doing this is because I replaced the tweeters on my DCM speakers, which are up front. You may not be able to see them, uh, mainly because I had to turn the iris way down to lower the brightness. Um, and hopefully it's still, you know, you can still see it on YouTube. But I turned it down so you could see the readouts on my SPL meter and on my distance meter and my different things. So you could actually see the levels. Um, so you may not see the speakers and some of the other stuff in the room here because of that. Uh, but anyways, I replaced the tweeters on my two DCM speakers, which is in uh, another video that I posted. So I figured I need to recalibrate everything because I took the tweeters out and I had to move my speakers around. I also, again, you may not be able to see it, moved my subwoofers a little bit and I actually decided to try something new. I actually stacked them. So my four subs, I have two stacks of two here and I have them just underneath my DCM speaker. So it raises the DCMs up pretty tall, but it makes them about mid-level with the screen. So I, I think that's still gonna work out. So anyways, we're gonna do the calibration now. So the way this works, I've got a few little uh, tools I'm gonna use here. I've got my SPL meter right here that I have set up on a tripod that's sitting roughly where my head kind of sits in this main listening position here in the middle of the theater. I also have a distance, I'll kinda, you might not be able to see it, but a distance uh, little calibrator here that I got from a Home Depot several years ago and just my remote from my uh, receiver, which is my Logitech Harmony remote right here. And one little bit of information that's kind of interesting. My Rotel receiver doesn't allow uh, for the decibel calibration in terms of a relative scale for the volume. So on the actual input, it only goes on an absolute scale. There's no option to change it. So you're only gonna see zero to like 100. You can't change it to where zero is reference level of 75 dB, and then turning it to the left would make it negative lower decibels. You'd see like negative one, negative two, or in half increments. And then to the right would be positive, so plus one, plus two, plus three, and in half increments. It doesn't allow you to do that. So I had to look through through the manual uh, to figure out how to do this somewhat properly on this receiver. And I'll kind of go through that process as we get there. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set the distance and the delay on these speakers. And you might see a little bit of this on the camera. You might not since I'm standing off to the side here. I don't really wanna get in the way too much of the actual microphone when I do these things. But the first thing we're going to do is we're going to click on the delay section. And this is going to give us the distances between the speakers. And some of these calibration distances are already set up from where my speakers were previously. So some of them might still be the same. Some of them might be different. We're going to go through and we're going to see here as I do this. Um, these also go in half foot increments, so I don't think it's going to be perfectly exact to the like inch or whatever uh, on my little distance meter. We're gonna have to just go and make it approximate, which shouldn't really mess it up too much. But anyway, so what I do is we're gonna start here on the front left speaker. I'm gonna turn on my little uh, meter here. I just sit it centralized on the microphone, aim it at my speaker, click the button to get a reading, and we're gonna get 11 feet, 10 inches, which since this goes on full increments, I usually round down instead of up. Uh, so it's a little less delay than a longer delay. So we're gonna leave that at 11.5. Then we're gonna go to my center channel, which is gonna be at 11 feet, which is a little different from where it was before. Uh, the reason for that is because the way I had my sub set up previously, um, I had them underneath the center channel, so it raised it up a little bit. I'm going to look to get a better stand to kind of prop it up a little bit taller, uh, but I do have it angled with some door stops underneath to kind of raise it up so it's at ear level, but that's probably why the half foot increment's a little different. Then we're also going to go to the right speaker, click that, 
and that is a 11 foot seven, which because as I mentioned in my other video, that wall in the front is uneven. I can't really get them perfectly even without having them like way off center from each other and having one pulled out several inches or pushed back several inches from the other. So this is about the best distance I'm gonna get on that. And what I did is because of these speakers, they have those secondary tweeters in the, in the back. You're supposed to keep them at least a foot away from the wall. So I have them set up to where they're exactly a foot uh, pushed away from that front wall. And I decided to go with that instead of trying to make them exactly equidistant to the microphone. And I think it still works out all right. So we've got those two. Now we're gonna go down to the subs. And for this, I usually, I've tried to make them both equal. So that's 11, 11 to the left subs. And four, that's not right. Uh, there we go. And 11, eight to the, oh, let me get it on there. 11, eight to the right subs. So I think 11 and a half is gonna work all right. So then for the surround sounds, you won't really be able to see those because they're behind the camera. But same thing, I'm just gonna sit up here and go. So the left is eight two, so eight foot works. And then you might see me a little bit here, maybe not. And throw this up here. Seven nine, so eight. Uh, I know I say normally round down, I think I'm gonna keep that eight foot. So it's, equidistant with the left rear and then these other ones for the center back left high left height uh, right height all this stuff I don't have any of those speakers set up so that doesn't matter they can stay at 10 okay so now and I'm gonna sit down on my couch back here and my dog is on the couch back here with me so you may hear him I don't know all right and I'm gonna zoom in here on the actual audio meter meter so what we have to do, as I mentioned earlier, is, oh, let me actually go sit that there. Since this doesn't have an, a relative scale for the surround sound volumes and decibel levels, you have to use the absolute scale, which goes from zero to 100. So the way we're gonna do this and the way I always do it is I go up to my center channel and I'm gonna raise the volume on my master volume on the receiver until that center channel reads 75 dB. And then what I'll do from there is that'll be my reference base level volume for reference level, and I'll adjust the trims on all the other speakers to match the 75. So that's what we're gonna do now, and I'll kind of be quiet, uh, but I should have the focus lock so you can see the dB here. And we're just gonna go over to the center. which right now, I, I was kind of quiet there. The level it's at, I don't even know what volume my receiver's on, probably like 50, because that's the default. It's at about like 60 or 65 decibels, so we're gonna kind of just turn this up until we get to 75. Okay, we're gonna set it right there. We're gonna set it there, <laughs> which if we go down here to status in the menu, 76 volume, that is the reference level. So 76 is gonna give us reference level. So when I play back a movie or something, if I set my uh, audio level to 76, that'll give me reference level. All right, so now we're just gonna back out here if I can this remote is kind of weird with this <clears throat> give me just a second I've when you get into the display like that the status it kind of like backs out and then you've got to go back in so it takes a second okay so now we're we're good on that so our center speaker is already calibrated so now we're gonna do all the other speakers 
So now we're on the left, and we're just going to click this, and we're going to go up and down, rock it back and forth until we get to roughly 75. So, and you'll notice the decibels are off, the plus and minus on there, mainly because uh, they're a little bit further away on the right speaker than the left speaker. But anyway, so we've got those. Now we're going to do the surround sounds. surround sounds I noticed I don't know if it's with the speakers or what they take a little bit more to get up to the reference level when it's at you know reference volume on the master dial I'm gonna go a little bit lower and run them a little bit under uh, so that they're about 74 that way I'm not maxing out the trim level uh, on it because I don't want to blow the speaker so we're gonna keep that at plus eight and then the left I'm gonna guess is gonna come out like one or two decibels probably below that probably like a plus six i'm gonna guess Actually, it's a little bit uh, higher, which I had that flip-flopped. So what we're going to do here now, I'm just going to run through the main speakers before we deal with the sub, because that one's going to be a little bit uh, different and a little more difficult. And, you know, we'll get to that in a minute. So we'll just start kind of with each speaker and go through and make sure they're all around 74, 75 dB. I did lower down that front right because I felt it was running a little bit hotter than the left center and I don't want it to overpower uh, the other one. So that's going to be those. So now we're going to go to the sub. The sub is a little bit harder because I don't have a weighted SPL meter to actually calculate the subs. According to the manual, you're wanting to get the subwoofers to 70 dB on a C weighted SPL meter, which is what I've got there. I don't know if I'm going to run it that high because I don't want to shake the house and I don't want to cause the subs to distort because these Polk subs that are up here are decent as a budget and a value sub, but they're not like an SVS or something that's more pro audio or high end level. 
that can dig deeper and can give you undistorted bass to that you know decibel level so we're gonna see kind of where it's at when i go up there but i don't know if we're actually going to get to that or if we're just kind of kind of leave it where it is or even tone it down a little bit because i just don't want the bass to be overpowering i want it to kind of blend somewhat seamlessly without you know distorting or causing problems so let's take a look at that now So it's at plus five. So what we're gonna do real quick, um, I'm in the menu screen, but on my 4K player, uh, I have the Spears and Munsell disc in there. So I've got it set at reference level. I'm actually gonna play the DTS Living World uh, demo real quick. That's usually what I do to test my surround sound setup. And we're gonna see how the bass looks on there because if the bass is super overpowering, I'm probably gonna tone it back. So let's uh, take a look here and give that a try. Hopefully you'll be able to see it. I'm gonna zoom in on the actual screen when it comes up. Well, actually I may leave it on the SBL meter so you can see where my peaks and stuff are uh, going. And this may take a minute. Oh, I think my 4K player turned off. Give me just a second. Yeah, I sat in the other menu for too long, so my, my Panasonic 4K player went and uh, turned off, or was on the off timer, so. Okay, so here we go. And now, the screen probably looks a little washed out. That's because I have my interior strip lights on in here, my LED lights. So it's a little washed out than if I was in a complete um, blacked out room right now. And I use uh, the Echo Dot for my automation down here so I don't really want to say that and cause other people who may be watching this to have their stuff go off so we're gonna I'm gonna be quiet I'm gonna click this and we're gonna kind of see how the bass sounds and make sure it's not too overpowering listen to reference level down here uh, because at least with this receiver depending how the audio is mastered on the disc it can jump way up higher like that so that if you notice was averaging like 90 dbs that is way too loud <laughs> down here that's gonna blow your eardrums out um, but I think the bass probably sounds good I'm actually gonna probably I don't know if I'll do it in the video but I'll probably listen to this one more time I usually listen on the scale instead of being at 76 i usually have it about 55 60 uh which actually i may just do that just you know for giggles here in comparison i'm going to turn that down and then we'll kind of see where the decibels at because i think that'll kind of hold us around 75 db so give me just a second all right so i've got it set to 60 so let's give that a try that's probably gonna hold around 75 db i'm gonna guess
Okay, uh, that was a lot more manageable and not ringing my ears like the other one was. And I could potentially turn it up instead of 60, you know, go to like 63, 64, 65 and probably get a baseline around like 70 dB. But anyways, that's going to do it for this video here. Uh, this is kind of like the second part of uh, my DCM speaker series. Uh, and then be on the lookout um the next video i'm going to do after this will be the story of my main left and right speakers and talking about how i got the dcms and then kind of the history of the different speakers i've had up front uh in my home theater here so uh again i like to close all my videos and just say thanks to all the people who've watched them and subscribed and done everything i really appreciate it and hopefully this video has been kind of interesting and uh hopefully the audio isn't clipped on here or or too overbearing uh, for people who are watching this at home uh but again hope you enjoyed it and i will see you in the next video thank you